from all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all evil intent, from sloth, worldliness, and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws. From sins of body and mind, from deceits of the world, flesh, and the devil. From famine and disaster, from violence, murder, and dying unprepared. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of our death, and at the day of judgment. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, by the preaching of your reign. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit. Hear our prayers, O Christ our God. Govern and direct your holy church, fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is your will. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world and to make disciples of all the nations. Enlighten your bishops, priests, and deacons, especially Andy, Jeff, Hector and Kay, and Scott, John, Alejandro, Calora, and Don, with knowledge and understanding, that by their teaching and their lives we may proclaim your word. Give your people grace to witness to your word and bring forth the fruit of your spirit. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Strengthen those who stand. Comfort and help the faint-hearted. Raise up the fallen. And finally beat down Satan under our feet. Guide the leaders of the nations into the ways of peace and justice. Hear us, o Give your wisdom and strength to Joseph, the President of the United States, to Greg, the governor of this state, and to Sylvester, the mayor of this city, that in all things they may do your will for your glory and the common good. Give to the Congress of the United States, the members of the President's Cabinet, those who serve in our state legislature, and all others in authority, the grace to walk always in the ways of truth. Bless the justices of the Supreme Court and all those who administer the law, that they may act with integrity and do justice for all your people. Give us the will to use the resources of the earth to your glory and for the good of all. Hear us, o Christ. Bless and keep all your people. Hear us, o Christ. Comfort and liberate the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. Hear us, o Christ. Heal the sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially Daniel, Colin, Patty, ever, 
Rowan, Nancy, Barbara, Carol, Bob, Pauline, Lola, Dora, Philip, Mary Lou, Fred, and those we name. Provide for the homeless, the hungry, and the destitute. Guard and protect all children who are in danger. Shower your compassion on prisoners, hostages, and refugees, and all who are in trouble. Forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Hear us as we remember those who have died, especially Jackie, Dorothy, and those we now name. Grant to us with them a share in your eternal glory. Give us true repentance, forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance, and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your word. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Once you have entered the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and you take possession of it and are settled there, Take some of the earthly produce of the fertile ground that you have harvested from the land the Lord your God is giving you and put it in a basket. Then go to the location the Lord your God selects for his name to reside. Go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I am declaring right now before the Lord my God that I have indeed arrived in the land the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. The priest will then take the basket from you and place it before the Lord your God's altar. Then you should solemnly state before the Lord your God, My father was a starving Aramean. He went down to Egypt, living as an immigrant there with few family members. But that is where he became a great nation, mighty and numerous. The Egyptians treated us terribly, oppressing us and forcing hard labor on us. So we cried out for help to the Lord, our ancestors' God. The Lord heard our call. God saw our misery, our trouble, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand in an outstretched arm, with awesome power, and gave us signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land full of milk and honey. So now I am bringing the earthly produce of the fertile ground that you, Lord, have given me. Set the produce before the Lord your God, bowing down before the Lord your God. Then celebrate all the good things the Lord your God has done for you and your family. Each one of you 
among, along with the Levites and the immigrants who are among you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us say the psalm in unison. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The second lesson is a reading from the book of Romans. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message of faith that we preach. Because you have confessed with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and in your heart you have found faith, that God raised you from the dead, and you shall be saved. Trusting with the heart that leads to righteousness, and confessing with the mouth leads to salvation. The scripture says, all who have faith in him won't be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek, because the same Lord is the Lord of all, who gives richly to all who call on him. All who call on the Lord's name will be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus returned from the Jordan River full of the Holy Spirit and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. There he was tempted for 40 days by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and afterward Jesus was starving. The devil said to him, Since you are God's son, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus replied, It's written people won't live only by bread. Next the devil led him to a high place and showed him in a single instant all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said, I will give you this whole domain and the glory of all these kingdoms. It's been entrusted to me and I can give it to anyone I want. Therefore, if you will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it's written, you will worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The devil brought him into Jerusalem and stood him at the highest point of the temple and said to him, Since you are God's son, throw yourself down from here, for it's written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and they will take you up in their hands so that you won't hit your foot on a stone. Jesus answered, It's been said, Don't put the Lord your God to a test. After finishing every temptation, the devil departed from him until the next opportunity. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. All things come from you, O Lord, and from your own have we given you. In the name of the one holy and triune God, amen. Please be seated. For those of us who have lived through more than a couple of Lenten seasons, we have probably at least begun to form a default posture or disposition or attitude toward Lent. It starts to well up in us about a week before the Lenten season arrives. Some folks express a deep love and appreciation for the season of Lent. And others, many of us actually, carry forward kind of dread into the season of Lent. It's, it's formed over years of traditions and experiences. I know my first Episcopal Church used to make us say right one for five weeks in a row for Lent. And I like right one, but it didn't feel like they were doing it because I liked it. These kinds of experiences happen for us over time. And then we get to those days before Lent and we feel our blood pressure just rising a little bit thinking of all the drudgery and self-denial and deprivation that has been thrust upon us over those years, expecting more of the same in the season to come. For many of us, Lent is just a big season of no. And we've been told explicitly or implicitly that this strict observance of the no's of Lent is obligation to God that basically buys us our free pass for the rest of the year. I want us to consider today Lent as a big yes. A time for gratitude, works of goodness, generosity, and growth. In the Eastern Church, what we often call the Orthodox Church Ukrainian Orthodox Church, the Russian Orthodox Church, the Greek Orthodox Church, the Coptic Church. 
Oftentimes, Lent is referred to as the tithe of the year. The tithe of the year. There's early precedent in the Bible of the faithful giving of a tithe of possessions, 10% of all that the faithful own, goods, crops, money, all offered to God through temple worship or giving alms or by setting aside time for worship and rest. This concept of tithing shows up in the book of Genesis for the first time. Abram is, uh, returns with his men from a successful battle. They had been encroached on all sides by many kingdoms, enemies against them. And in defending themselves, they are met with success. Abram returns to the, the king, the mysterious king of Salem, Melchizedek, and makes a gift of a tenth of all the spoils of those battles as a thank offering, as an expression of gratitude. But in that story, Abram doesn't keep the rest. One of the kings that has been defeated says, well, I guess you'll want to take the rest of this, these spoils. And Abram says, no, I don't want you to get any credit for the riches that will come my way in the future. You can have it all back. The tithe is never seen as a tax. It's not a percentage paid for the right to hang on to or hoard everything else. No, it's more of an offering of gratitude, an intention to remember and honor God first as the source of all we have. So it is, I believe, in the season of Lent. Not so much a tax on our year as a time to make gift of all we have to God. Today in our reading from Deuteronomy, there is no emphasis on, on those numbers, 10th, 10%, any of that. But the emphasis is on the number one, as in honoring God first. Here we drop in near the end of a very long speech being delivered by Moses to God's people, right on their cusp of entering into the land that God has promised them. Moses is declaring to the people a code by which they are to live in the promised land. He's spelling out the common values, norms, and rules they will hold together in order to have a healthy community. Moses is getting the people ready to cross over into their inheritance after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. And the people are instructed that when they begin to glean the first harvest, they will engage a brief liturgy, recalling God saving them from slavery, leading them through the wilderness, and bringing them to inhabit a fruitful land. They will take some of the early produce of their harvest and make it an offering to the priest. And they will recount the story of going from slavery and scarcity and wilderness wandering into God's provision, saying these words, God brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land full of milk and honey. So now I am bringing the early produce of the fertile ground that you, Lord, have given me. Now, whether a tithe of the year, Lent and Holy Week, actually add up together to roughly 10% of the days of a year, whether a tithe or more generally a gift of early fruits or first fruits, there's a powerful connection with this idea of our beginning in a new year, including for us this year, our beginning as a parish. This is our first year together, and we are seven days in. We can engage this spiritual season of Lent and set intentions for how we will honor God and give thanks in it. Because how we do this, how we engage in this season of Lent, it will set the tone for how we face 
everything else, whether heights of mountains or depths of valleys, whether joys or sorrows, whether scarcity or abundance, how we engage this season of Lent will set the tone for how we will engage everything else that comes to us in the days ahead. I love this idea of Lent as a tithe, or I, actually I love it more as a, the idea of, of the first offering of our time, the first offering of our year. We can set aside this season as, a, as an offering of thanks and honor for all God has seen us through, all the times we've known God's love and faithfulness in our lives, and for the faith to trust God will be with us in whatever comes in the time ahead. It can be a season of yes, a season of yes. As a parish, together we can say yes to setting aside this time to engage with one another in worship, in fellowship, and in service. There are Lenten opportunities. There there's the weekly Wednesday soup and study, a chance to come around a simple meal together and to consider the truths of God. Or there's our multi-generational Sunday school offering that Christy Hudlow began leading today, 9 a.m. Or next Saturday, you can come out at 8 or 9 a.m. and pitch in for a couple of hours picking up trash and trimming bushes and just taking care of this wonderful campus that God has given us. Or you can clean out your own house and bring some of those unused items to donate for our March 26 rummage sale. And then you can show up and help serve our community on that day. These are some ways as a parish community that we can set aside this season to thank God for bringing us this far by faith. We don't have to do all of this. Actually, we don't have to do any of this. Let's be really blunt about that. But if we choose to engage, we can maybe find a space between what we feel like doing over here and what's just too much over here. We can push ourselves to go beyond comfort zones, make a little bit of a sacrifice of our time, energy, and also continue with good practices of taking care of ourselves, the people we love, with rest and healthy eating and time with those who are closest to us. I know some of you have exciting vacation plans for the summer. You've shared them with me. And after a couple of years of wondering if we'll ever get a vacation again, you're very excited about being gone for a week or two or a month or two. I have a couple of weeks set aside myself in the summer. Lent offers us a time before the summer, before we go our ways, take care of ourselves and those we love, go and see and take care of those we love who have been too far away from us for way too long. It offers us a time as a parish right now to be together, to invest in gratitude, in works of goodness, in generosity, and in growth. And of course, this principle works in other circles too, in our private devotion and in any community that means a lot to us. Families of origin and families of choice, service groups, card clubs, supper groups, wherever we have found meaningful connection with others, Lent can be a time to say yes with thankful hearts and spend extra time giving and serving and fellowshipping and growing. I want to say that Lent does not have to be a drudgery or a miserable season or deprivation that some think it must be. Lent, which actually means spring, can be our spring, our season of coming alive, coming into bloom. 
The disciplines of Lent might be seen as acting out what life as a Christian should be all year long. Life of gratitude and grounding in God's goodness and generosity toward others. So my friends, in this season of Lent, let's offer the first fruits of this new year as a people, as a parish. Let us give God these 40 days of gratitude, this tithe of our year, and our works of goodness, and our generosity with one another, generosity of spirit and resources. It's time to grow and come alive. We remember that God is our source of life and blessing, and God has been with us all along, and we are blessed to be a blessing. All things come from you, O oh God, and from your own have we given you. Amen. Let us stand together and affirm our faith. It's saying the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Please exchange a sign of peace with those around you. Peace. 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 Peace, Barry. You may be seated. I have the printout here today because, as I already mentioned, we have a few things coming up. I want to start by looking back uh, just a few days. Um, last week, we had so much going on that we didn't say a lot about diocesan council, except uh, in the ways that it affected our entire parish. But there is uh, another cause for celebration, and that is that our own uh, beloved senior warden and verger was elected to the standing committee of the Diocese of Texas. So if you look in your bulletin, you'll see a, a little write-up about uh, what it means to be on the standing committee. The standing committee is a, a canonical authority in the diocese, a, a group of advisors, and uh, in the absence of a bishop, uh, the group that comes together to make decisions for the diocese is actually the authority in the diocese in the absence of an active bishop. Um, and so we're honored to be represented as a brand new parish with uh, our senior warden on the council of six, three laypersons and three clergy called the standing committee. So thank you for putting yourself forward, Vion. It was a risk that you took. Uh, but our diocese will be blessed that you did. So, 
Also want to, uh, I said senior warden, just wanted to acknowledge that, um, that we did in our vestry meeting on the last Sunday elect officers to the vestry. Uh, three of those officers are here today. I appointed the senior warden and that's Vian Carter Johnson. Uh, we elected a junior warden, which is Colin Dunham. Will you stand so folks know who you are, Colin? Colin? Uh, and our, tre our clerk uh, was Robert Burlingame. Uh, thank you, Robert. Please stand. And Gail Keller was elected as the treasurer, and Gail's not here with us today. So we have a wonderful uh, vestry elected, and we're ready to dig in and get to work together. I also want to say we have a wonderful school board. Uh, school board is comprised of members and non-members of our congregation, and so it's a little bit more hit or miss uh, when folks are here. I see Cheryl Kimbrough's here. Uh, Cheryl is on the school board, was elected. Um, who else is on school board who's here today? There you are. Hey, Peter. Uh, Peter um, is uh, Culling is on the school board and uh, newly elected. Thank you for stepping out. Um, relatively new to the congregation, so it probably felt a little riskier to say I I'll get involved. Thank you, Peter. Uh, our officers on the school board, uh, with myself serving as the president, we have um, Sarah Bichelle is the vice president of the school board. Grace uh, Farquhar is our treasurer this year. And our clerk is, hey, there you are, Allison, uh, Allison Rockhold. It, will you wave for folks? That's Allison. And Allison is a, a non-elected member of the board, and she's serving as an officer as the secretary. Thank you so much. So I mentioned all the Linton offerings that are coming up. Let me just tag two things that are immediately in the future. One is, this Wednesday, we will begin to gather in Parish Hall for five weeks for a simple, simple meal of soup and bread and wine. So we invite you to join us in Parish Hall at 6 p.m. We will um, be joined by some of our friends from Salem Evangelical Lutheran. Uh, and so it'll be a time of fellowship and once again, getting to know some of the folks who are here um, in, the chase, uh, in the space as we've offered hospitality to them. Uh, and I'm appreciative because I have a partner in uh, organizing and leading the effort. So Marvin and I will, uh, will share the weeks of leading the discussions. There's a book, and you don't have to read it ahead, but if you'd like to, we have copies of Adam, uh, Adam Hamilton's book, Half Truths, uh, in the narthex. You'll find it on the reception desk. We ask that you make a contribution of $10 to cover the cost. Um, if you want to put that in the offering and then grab it to go, or if you want to cover the cost later, but make sure you have your book. It's totally the honor system. Just grab the book and, and start reading chapter one for Wednesday. The second thing is that we do have a work day planned for Saturday, and this is very targeted work that we have in mind. Uh, we want to trim the bushes, help Mario do that because it's work that takes him several weeks to be able to get to everything. We want to try to get all the roses trimmed down, get our crepe myrtles in shape. We want to get any weeds pulled up and then uh, trash. The, we, we have neighborhood children who love our property and use it and often leave us lots of treasures behind when they go. And so we have, we have a fence line over there that needs to be cleaned out. We have a broken down picnic table that needs to be disposed of, just various things. So if you have a wheelbarrow or a truck, just show up with that. We will uh, we'll load it up on that end and we'll drive it around and, and put it in the dumpster. So look forward to seeing you on Saturday. I'll bring breakfast tacos. That'll motivate some of you. So we'll bring breakfast tacos from Pepe's, of course. So I'll see you there, Nick. <laughs> All right, so please look at your bulletin. The last thing I'll mention today. Oh, yes, Peter, please. Sure. Oh. <laughs> They did. <laughs> Would you like to make the announcement, Vian? <laughs> I'll, maybe I'll find out who it is as well. <laughs> the, the question from the, from the audience was, did the vestry ever get around to selecting a rector for grace? <laughs> we thought long and hard. <laughs> and there was lots of debate because we had so many choices. But we settled on the Reverend Randall Scott Painter. <laughs>
because we think he'll do a good job. What's that? We think he'll do a good oh, job. Oh, okay. I'm going to give it everything I've got. <laughs> as long as y'all know, I do not have the energy I had four years ago when I got here. <laughs> Uh, I gratefully accepted that call, and uh, thank you for asking, Peter. Uh, and uh, it is an honor to serve as your rector. So thank you so much. Uh, rummage sale. One thing about that. It's on March 26th, so we, so we don't need to plug the event too much. But we do want to invite your donations. As you uh, engage perhaps a Lenten practice of simplifying in your home, you may find things that are unused, that might be a blessing or a benefit to someone else, we invite you to make a donation to Grace. We do have forms where we can uh, give you credit to, sh to um, ask the IRS for a little bit of leniency on your taxes. Uh, you can share with them what you've donated. And uh, it's very easy if you can show up between 8 a.m. and noon, Monday through Friday, but that's not the only time. Just email Elizabeth and let her know when you're coming or when you'd like to come so that she can make sure someone is here to help you access the room. Thank you. Carla? Yes, the flex room is, but, but what we're asking is that, that folks either come during the week when we'll know you're going there or that you let us know if you're gonna drop off on Sunday. We're, we're, not, we're asking you not to just go leave it in the room without telling us who has shared it and where it came from and letting us organize it. But yes, where, we, where, the, where the donations will end up is in the flex room, which is at the uh, end of Parish Hall, right as you go out the door. Yes, we have another question today. Probably, but I would encourage you to call or email Elizabeth. She's coordinating it. And so we'll make sure that you're able to make those donations, but we don't have a plan that I can announce today. Thank you so much. All right. Well, our offertory sentence is from the prophet Micah. He has told you, O mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice? and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. I'm really a mess today. Yes. <laughs> Birthdays and anniversaries. It was such a dramatic reading of the offertory sentence. I can't do that again, y'all. <laughs> Peter, Nick. Oh, man. I threw you with the rector's question. Yeah. That, no, no, no. You're fine. Anybody up here? Well, so glad. What day is your birthday? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. What Wednesday. day? Is Wednesday. Oh, so I, Nick, I got you some soup for your birthday. Fantastic. <laughs> gotcha. Oh. Come on. When is your birthday? It is. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, I'm glad we didn't forget today. Well, that's great. Let's pray together for Nick and Peter and Katja. You'll find the prayer on page 12. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ we pray, and Rick, amen. Happy birthday, you all.
All things come from you, O God, and from your own have we have given you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Have, Have mercy, mercy, Lord, for we are sinners. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection. We await the day of his coming. Lord God of our mothers and our fathers, God of Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation.
ahora en la lengua de nuestros corazones, oremos. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God.
Please stand as you are able and let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in his world. And the blessing of the one holy and triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you today and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Do the dismissal.